Hi, I'm Tony Krumnus. Uh, this uh, video is, is all about harmony and uh, chords and how they are constructed. Musical theory. And I know you don't need to know any musical theory uh, in order to enjoy playing the piano, the guitar, whatever, or the ukulele. Uh, but I think it helps to have some understanding, particularly if you want to write songs, you want to play in higher positions on the, or the fingerboard, um, generally to understand how things uh, work. At the end of the video, there's a quirky comedy song by Bernard Cribbins, which demonstrates very nicely the use of secondary dominant sevenths, which is one of the things I'll be talking about. Harmony is where two or more sounds are played or sung together, stacked by intervals of thirds, fourths or fifths, they form chords. Stacked thirds are by far the most common, and three alternative letter name notes forming thirds and stacked together is called a triad with a root, a third, and a fifth. They're often built on the notes of the scale being used in, in any song, but in fact they can be built on any of the 12 notes of music I described in the Resources of Music Part 1. There are four kinds of tri: major, minor, diminished, and augmented. And the difference between them is in the number of semitones between the three notes. A semitone being a distance between two frets on a ukulele or a guitar, or between two adjacent notes on a keyboard. And two semitones, of course, make a tone. If the gap between the two notes is four semitones, it's called a major or big third. If it's three semitones, it's called a minor or smaller third. I can show you this on the ukulele guitar, but it's a lot easier to visually see the intervals on a keyboard where all notes go up and down by consecutive semitones and they don't stop swings. So I will look at that first. On a keyboard, all the notes go up by semitones, like that. And you can see from the C major chord here, it's a C, D and a G. There's one, two, three, four semitones between the C and the E, but only one, two, three semitones between the E and the G. Starting on the A chord, however, there's A, C and E, and there's one, two, three semitones between the A and the C, and one, two, three, four between the C and the E. If we start on the B, it's B, D and F, so that's 1, 2, 3, and also 1, 2, 3, so that makes it a diminished triad. This is an augmented triad on a keyboard. When you play strings 2, 3 and 4 on an ukulele, you're playing a triad of C major. You've got a C, an E and a G. On the top strings 1, 2 and 3, you're playing an A minor chord because you've got an A, A here, C and an E. The order doesn't, doesn't matter in either case. When you play all the strings together, everybody's favourite chord, you're playing either a chord of C with an added E or a chord of A minor with an added G. And G is the seventh note and A is the sixth note. So that's a C6 or an A minor 7. Two chords for the price of one. Not, not bad. On a ukulele when you play a C chord you're playing these three basic notes of the trial but you're doubling one of the notes, in this case a C. So you play a C chord there. Um, the same as a G chord, when you've got playing a G chord here, you're doubling the G. The G is here and also here. Same note. Or you can extend the triad by adding more alternative letter notes. And that would make it a seventh chord, so you can have a C seven chord. Uh, or uh, the ninth if you go an extra one or eleventh or a thirteenth. Thirteenth, incidentally, if you drop an octave, become chords of the sixth, like the one we had earlier on. 
If you add a major third to a major chord, you get a major seventh. So the C chord there, if I go down to a B, G to B is a major third, so that's a C major seven. If you add a minor third to a minor triad, uh, you get a minor seventh. We've already seen this with A minor seven. You've got A minor triad here and the seventh added here. If you add a minor third to a diminished triad, you get a diminished seventh chord. Starting on note B, which we are diminished, you add that note which makes it a diminished seventh. For example, B, D, F and A flat. And it can be called by any of those four names because all the intervals are the same distance apart, three semitones, um, and so you can't tell which note is the root. Add a major third, and it becomes a half diminished seventh. With the major third added to the end of that. All the notes of the scale have names, and a chord built on the fifth note of the scale is called the dominant. It's the most important note after the tonic or first or home note. Add a note, seven letter names above the dominant note, the minor third, and it's called a dominant seventh. It feels unsettled and very strongly wants to resolve onto the tonic or first chord. Note that in a dominant seventh chord, uh, the seventh note is a tone below the tonic, but in major seventh chords, it's semitones. The reason for this unsettled feeling is largely because of the two notes that are three tones or six semitones apart. And that's called a tritone, or sometimes the devil's interval or diabolus in musica. In major chords there's only one tritone and it falls between the seventh and the fourth notes in C. A key of C that would be a B and a, an F. And the leading note B wants strongly to rise a semitone to the tonic C whilst the fourth note's F, it's a dominant seventh, seven notes above G, and it equally strongly wants to fall a semitone to resolve the third, the median note. Very clearly in the uh, G7 to uh, a C chord, for example, where you've got this. Very definite uh, relaxation as you go from a B to a C, and from a F to a an E. So you get the two. You've got the same thing in a C7 chord to an F. Here you've got the dominant seventh wanting to fall down and the uh, leading note wanting to rise. Interesting these two notes can swap function, but that's another story. Incidentally, tritones also form on alternative notes of a diminished seventh chord, C diminished seventh, C to E G G flat or E flat to A, which is why it's often used as an alternative to a dominant seventh as well as as a passing chord. Now, secondary dominant sevenths are chords that pretend to be proper dominant sevenths. They want to resolve onto their, their tonic chord, which is five letter notes below or four notes above. Well, that's been a, a lot of information, so here it is in summary. I, I think that's enough of that. that. Let's have some light relief with a quirky comedy song by Ted Dix and Miles Reed, uh, written for their review uh, and another thing in 1960, and performed by Bernard Cribbins, actor in such films as Railway Children, Faulty Towers, the Carry On series, uh, and many others. He was also a much-loved storyteller on the children's TV series, Jack and Ori. I'm doing it as well because it nicely demonstrates the use of secondary dominant sevenths. Upon a Monday morning, oh, the rain, it was a rain, and my love, she came to me and said, oh, when shall you and I be wed? I have bought a double bed and mother is complaining. Complain about anything with that one. And all 
all the while the rain it was a raining. Upon the Tuesday morning, oh, the snow it was a glistening. My love, she had not gone away, and so I asked her, Mistress, pray, what was it you said yesterday? Because I really wasn't listening. Oh, didn't like that. Snow it was a glistening. Upon the Wednesday morning, oh, the hail it was a hailing. My love, she made a quick retort and said, To cut a story short, I bought a bed the double thought. Your hearing must be failing. <sighs> Call me a definite, didn't like that. And all the time, the hail it was a hailing. Upon the Thursday morning, oh, the day was not a hot one. I said you bought a double bed. Well, that was what I thought you said. You must be going off your head, cause I've already got one. They got two now. What do you do with two double beds? <laughs> Don't tell me. All the time, the hay was not a hot one. It was on a Friday morning, oh. <laughs> Nobody spoke. It was on a Saturday morning, oh. The thunder, it was frightening. I shouted so as I could be heard. Oh, let us marry on the third. But did she answer? Not a word, because she'd been struck by lightning. <laughs> Rain and everything. But after that, the weather started brightening. Went fishing myself, caught a nice big beauty of one. Oh, it was really good. I've him a tea. Now, quite quickly, I'll, I'll go through the chords because it's been a long video. This is the key of C, so it starts with the C chord and then the F chord. And then it moves this, this sequence of secondary down the seventh. C to a B7. Two ways of playing that. You can play it here, or you can also play it here. But that is better, I think, because it, uh, it has the melody note at the top. Uh, B uh, is, a, is a fifth note of the key of a E, so it goes to E, but an E7. That is the fifth note of the key of A, so it goes now to A, but an A7. Then an A7 goes to a D7. Then that goes to a G7. And that goes back to a C, and then repeats. Nice sequence of secondary dominant sevenths. Well, I can only hope that you found that interesting and, and useful. Um, whether you play keyboard or whether you play a ukulele or a guitar. Anyway, whatever you do and however you do it, have fun.